Right, first of all, I just wanted to say sorry it has taken so long to get this video um, up and uh, and sorry that we've had such a long delay between all of our videos. It has been a really, really busy time at Chateau Toi Cloche because we've been trying to get ready for a whole load of bookings that we've got. Um, and it has been a couple of months now since we've been able to have any bookings. Um, we had a couple right at the beginning of the year and then we discovered that we had, well, the boiler breakdown and we discovered we had a return of the dry rot, which they were dis it was disastrous, basically. <laughs> There's no other word for it. Um, and those are not only things that meant that we couldn't quite open, uh, but they were also huge expenses, which we'd not anticipated. Um, but on that note, I just wanted to also say a huge thank you to all of our patrons. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, we have a site um, uh, where you can donate or support our project on www.patreon.com um, and for our all access patrons like Nigel and David um, they will also get a shout out on the videos or in the credits of the videos um, so I just want to say a huge thank you to them because um, all of that extra support has been hugely helpful at this time when we've basically not had the income that we've expected and loads of extra costs um, that we didn't anticipate either so it's been a bit of a challenge um, and it has meant that the videos have suffered. But I've now got a good pipeline and a good um, a couple of videos lined up that should be able to uh, um, be released. So hopefully I'll be a little bit more regular in um, providing updates going forwards. Um, but just one other little feature of the Patreon site is we also use it to just give some extra updates to that members only community. So if you're if you really can't wait between the videos and want to know what we're up to then do check out our patreon site it's basically just search chateau to our cloche at patreon um p-a-t-r-e-o-n anyway um have a look <laughs> anyway i hope you enjoyed the video cheers bye Right, behind us is an absolute bombsite, I know, but it was once a beautiful garden, you wouldn't believe it. Um, the reason it's in this terrible, terrible state of basically just kind of looking like a, a war zone um, is that we needed to install a new sewage system for the chateau and they needed to put a kind of a filtration bed right down there in the middle of the garden. Now, when we spoke to them at first, they were like, oh, we can't put it there because um, it was too low and it was basically in a bit of a dip in the middle of the garden. Um, and they were saying we'd either have to put it on one side, which meant chopping down trees over there, or over here, which meant chopping trees down over here. Um, we didn't want to do either of that, both because it would have been really expensive, but also it's quite sad to lose those beautiful trees. Um, so we came up with a cunning plan. We'd already been thinking about building an organic pool. So kind of like a pond, but one that you can swim in basically, that doesn't have any chlorine in or filtration systems. It just works from natural processes. Um, so our plan was is if we could get the ecosystem of the pond right, people could actually swim in it. Um, we were originally planning on doing this in two or three years um, once we'd already started earning money on the chateau but rather than destroying the garden twice we thought well let's do it now use the earth from the pond to level off the garden and then then they can install the uh, the sort of the filtration bed for the fossil septic and then we can regrow a beautiful lawn which is our job now we've somehow got to turn this clay mess into a beautiful lawn so how are we going to do that? We've got 
some topsoil that we kind of took off before we put down all of this extra earth, um, which I'm hoping is going to be enough um, because we can't really afford to pay for lots of new topsoil. Um, we've got a load of grass seed and we've got this new scarifier machine which chops up the earth and so the idea is is we'll go around with that, it will chew up the earth, a bit like a farmer's plough really, um, and then sow the seeds and then hopefully with lots of watering and tender loving care and a net to, to keep off the birds, um, hopefully the grass will grow in about, well you'll start to see it in a couple of weeks. Um, who knows though because clay is quite notoriously difficult to grow grass on so it'll be interesting to see whether we can actually manage it the first time round or whether we need to do I think it's called overseeding where you would have where we might have to kind of go back and do some areas with a bit more um, but fingers crossed uh, the job for this weekend will will go as planned um, it's quite wet so I'm not sure how the scarifier will do with the soil but we will see how we get on really really beautiful I do, do love it this time of the morning it's just you've got the birds the sun streaming through the trees it's just so kind of peaceful but also there's so much nature here I really really it's um it's quite magical in the morning it's definitely my favorite time of the day anyway today we have got an exciting little project to do we are going to try and sort out the lawn at last um I mean, I think we realise we're not going to be able to get the whole lawn done in one go. Um, so what we will do instead is we will sort up this front bit of the lawn. And then when we've uh, done that, then we can kind of leave the back bit for however long it'll be until the pool is ready. And then we can worry about that. Who knows when it will be in four months or so. Um, but at least if we can get this bit of the lawn looking nice, then we will be able to um, enjoy it really. And we've got um, we've got a kind of friends coming in a few weeks, and so it would be nice if it manages to grow by then to actually have beautiful lawn to look at rather than um, the chaos it is at the moment. So that's our plan. So yeah, fingers crossed it works, and uh, we will have a beautiful lawn. But. First of all, we need to try and chop up the clay a bit because it's really hard and compacted. So um, using that machine will be fun, but because of my like knackered wrist, Chris is going to have to do most of the uh, the tricky, choppy choppy bit because it's quite a beast and it jumps around a lot. Um, but the other thing we need to try and do is level it off a bit with, um, ideally you'd use a plough, but again, trying to get any machinery into this house has always been a bit of a challenge because uh, uh, the gates are too narrow, so I think we'll have to kind of improvise. But we're hoping we can get the, the little um, lawnmower tractor going and then we can maybe pull a, a wooden pallet or something like that along behind us. But uh, yeah, we'll see how we can get on. Uh, it's, we've had some challenges getting the, the lawnmower working. Let's go over here in the shade. Yeah, so um, on Chateau DIY we recorded a little bit of our attempt, our first attempt, to uh, sow some grass seed. Um, we just used some old seed and a rake and broke up an area of soil over there and planted some seeds. No sign of any grass growing. Um, so we've invested in a new piece of kit. Hello, Bo. Um, and it's a scarifier, I think it's called. So uh, yeah, we've bought this scarifier, which basically just chews up the, uh, the hard clay soil. Yeah, so um, Chris is using it behind me there. Um, quite a wild ride. It sort of kicks all over the place. It seems to be doing a really good job. It's properly. Careful! Uh, <laughs> it's properly chewing up the soil. Um, well, the idea is that it just breaks up the soil. Um, should make it look so when we sow the grass seed, uh, it should just kind of nicely go in and rub it. 
It's doing quite a good job and uh, we've got a lot of a lot of lawn to do so we're just going to do this first area first and see how it goes and uh, we've got a nice big net we can throw over it as well to keep the birds off um, and yeah once we've done that we'll uh, do the rest I guess.
made the seeds and now um, break them in and now I'm just rolling it to sort of try and compress the seeds into the earth just to make sure they get a good contact with the, uh, um, with the soil. No contact, no germination. No contact, no germination. So this roller I bought for peanuts, I can't remember, I think it was like 20 euros or something. I then spent about 40 euros in petrol driving miles and miles to get it, but I love it, it's beautiful. Although originally we were thinking of levelling the whole lawn with it, um, and I don't think that would have worked. I think uh, this wouldn't have been up to the task, we would have needed sort of a six tonne thing to do that. Um, but for this, it's doing a really nice job. I'll let you get on. <laughs> So we've just got back from London. We had a lovely week in London. We uh, um, obviously we had to work during the week, but it also was an opportunity to catch up with loads of friends and family. And it was my brother's thirtieth, um, so we had a lovely time. Anyway, when we went before we went away, we sowed the garden, and you can start to see grass sprouting up now. Um, there are areas where there's almost like lines. I think what's probably happened is. There's been so much rain, I think it's like moved the seed into little valleys. Um, so you've got little areas where there's quite a lot of grass and then there's others where it's not so much. There's a bit in the middle which is looking a little bit bare, so I'm quite worried about that. But um, we might have to do a little bit more overseeding, but hopefully, give it another two to three weeks, it might be all right, so fingers crossed.